Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning. Happy Friday. It is March 22nd. Steph, we've been wanting to do this story pretty much all week, and we just now have time to do it. What do you think about getting a pizza from Chick-fil-A? Hmm. We can't get one here just yet, but they're actually testing out the idea at their test kitchen in Maryland. That's right. So it comes after Chick-fil-A lovers and bloggers started creating their own pizza recipes with the nuggets and posting these videos online. So you may have seen some of the videos and the chain thought that they'd get a try. All right, so one option they're experimenting with is a Chick-fil-A pizza pie. Mozzarella cheese topped with chopped nuggets drizzled with Chick-fil-A sauce and served with pickle chips. Interesting. The other option is the Buffalo Ranch pizza pie, which is mozzarella cheese topped with sliced nuggets, buffalo sauce, and ranch dressing, and a dusting of zesty lemon pepper seasoning. All right, they haven't lost me yet. They're also making uh, other traditional pizzas. Not clear if, if or when any of the new menu, menu items will be available outside of Chick-fil-A's test kitchen. But I have, so, I have a list of some of the other things uh -huh. that Chick-fil-A has tried <gasps> and they died. They okay. didn't make it past let's, the testing let's phase. Let's hear it, let's hear it. All right, you guys ready for this? Yes. Biscuit cinnamon rolls. Oh. Yeah, so they said it took too long to make. Uh, Chick-fil-A's okay. chicken quesadilla. Mm -hmm. Okay. Took too long to make. Okay, I hope. Try this one. Rosemary garlic flatbed bread wrap. It actually made it to test markets, but uh -huh. uh, it got mixed reactions. Some people loved it, some people yeah. hated it. This is the weirdest one. It's a square cranberry orange bagel with cream cheese and a chicken filet patty. So it's like a sweet, yeah. savory thing. Uh. But they said it was probably way too out there for most Chick-fil-A customers. They could have put it in their breakfast menu. And the one thing I want to see if it's going to come back is uh, there's a cauliflower sandwich that they were doing. They use a breaded filet of cauliflower instead of chicken. There's no word yet if it'll show up in menus, but that was tested in three markets just last year. I wonder if it did well. Well, you know, what's, what's, I guess you feel like less guilty eating cauliflower right. bread right. as opposed to the, the real Full of calories, bread. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And they said it wasn't supposed to be a meat huh. substitute. They were calling it plant forward. Oh, okay, plant plant based. Yes. But I know there are some things that they did have that went away that we were sad about. Like you, uh, you're missing a certain sandwich. I'm starting a petition to bring back the honey pepper pimento chicken sandwich. Please, please, <laughs> yes. please. It was seasonal. It was here last oh. fall, and now it's gone again. And, and I was a fan of the the chicken salad sandwich. Do you remember that one, Justin? It was a I while back. I don't, but I did love the pimento honey yeah, thing. Another that person. Was, that was really good. And the pizza, like, I love Chick-fil-A sauce. Right? I love the nuggets. I love pickles. So <laughs> Bring me the so pizza. So far, they've got Justin. I'm all in. Okay. Yeah, us too. I'm all in. But, you know, these test things, that's the only frustrating thing. They test it somewhere that you never yeah. know if yeah. it'll actually make it to the menu. So mm -hmm. Coming to so. San Antonio. Please. Yes. Please. Uh, who doesn't love Chick-fil-A, right? Uh, anyway. Uh, what we don't love is today's pollen count. It is not good. Uh, we had molds and oak jump up. Both of them are in the high category. 7,230 for mold, 5,140 for oak. Not the way we wanted to end the week. A lot of people are sniffling and sneezing. This is probably the reason we are in the midst of oak season, but the fact that we have molds on top of that does not help things at all. Fog is lifted. We're seeing visibilities rise everywhere other than Pleasanton, which is still at a quarter of a mile, but that'll come up quickly. The fog is uh, going away. There's a satellite picture. We just have a little bit of fog here and there, a little bit of low cloudiness. But what I can tell you is that we're going to see a lot of sun tonight. So those temperatures you see there, 63, they're going to jump up rapidly. And we're expecting to be up near 80 this afternoon. Still uh, in the 60s in most spots, though, right now. 73 noontime. There's your high of 80 sunny this afternoon. We will get a bit of a breezy north wind, but all in all, really nice day. Really nice evening too. 74 at 8 o'clock, 70 at 9 p.m. And very quickly, let's look at some of the weather headlines here. Uh, quite weekend, more clouds, wind on Sunday, but all in all, it's uh, it's not a bad looking weekend. Uh, then we'll get some storms on Monday. Best odds are early on Monday, and we've got another eclipse update for you. We're going to keep those coming because we are getting closer and closer, and we're getting very excited. Lots of coverage for you to come. All right, RJ, what's going on out there right now? Are things clearing up? Yeah, Justin, things are clearing up. Remember, we were with you just a couple of minutes ago talking about this major crash, I-10 westbound at uh, Callahan, but traffic is now moving smoothly through this area, but they still had that exit ramp closed off there to medical. So there were two reported crashes in this area, one on Callahan, 
one on medical and looks like we have got all of our activity off to the right hand side and we do have traffic moving through there right now. We're still seeing some pretty good delays here. If you are coming up I-10 West right now and this is right there right past 410 and that I-10 interchange so traffic still backed up to about Vance Jackson Road. If you are coming up maybe uh, if you want to avoid some of this traffic maybe go up uh, Fredericksburg Road. That might be an option to head out to the northwest side. Taking you to the east side right now we have a stalled vehicle loop 410 northbound at I-10 not causing too many delays right there but something that our drivers in that area might run into as we zoom out right now and again biggest thing that we've been following uh, so we got uh, so we got a little bit more information here on this crash in Seguin that was I-10 eastbound at FM 725 it was an 18 wheeler that's trailer caught fire so we do have at least one main lane blocked eastbound for all of our travelers headed to the Seguin area right now and we have a stalled vehicle I-35 north at division so we're going to zoom back in to the downtown area because we have the uh, 28th annual Cesar E. Chavez March for Justice taking place tomorrow morning. So we went ahead and mapped out the route. We're going to start here at the Guadalupe Cultural Arts Center. That's at Guadalupe and Brazos. Then we're going to come all the way to South Flores and then go up towards Cesar Chavez. This is the midway point right there. That's SoFlo HEB. And then we're going to go all the way to Hemisphere Civic Park. That's where things are going to wind down. This is a two mile stretch. They're going to start closures out there starting as early as 7 a.m. So from 7 a.m. to about 2 30 we're going to have sort of these rolling closures as the march makes its way through here if you need to find transportation out there keep in mind via has a free park and ride service that's going to be taking people from the alamo dome lots b and c and then taking them back that starts at eight o'clock to 2 30 in the afternoon so we're going to expect a lot of people out there thousands of people out there for the 20th annual cesar e chavez march for justice mark and 70 back to you guys thank you rj let's look at today's nine at nine In mere hours, some federal departments and other agencies could shut down. The plan to keep them open appears to have enough support to pass, but it's not clear when it will be enacted. Getting it done on time might come down to the Senate, where a single senator can slow a bill's passage. Safety standards at Boeing are once again under scrutiny after investigators say the brakes failed on an American Airlines plane in Dallas. The so-called braking anomaly is now under investigation. Airline executives could meet as soon as next week with Boeing's board of directors after several recent safety incidents. Border Patrol agents arrested hundreds of migrants after they rushed past razor wire and overcame National Guard members in El Paso yesterday. The migrants were arrested under a violation of Title VIII. This comes more than a day after a federal appeals court blocked SB4 from going into effect. The appeals court heard arguments over whether to allow Texas to temporarily enforce SB4 on Wednesday, but the judges did not say when they will rule. The Justice Department is suing Apple, one of the largest companies in the world. The DOJ accuses Apple of becoming a monopoly in the smartphone market by pushing out competitors while raising their own prices. Apple denies the allegations. New recalls for Hyundai and Kia. The car makers are recalling a combined 147,000 vehicles over potential problems with the charging unit for the 12 volt battery found in every car. Federal regulators say the battery could fail and increase the risk of a crash. When grocery prices spiked during the pandemic, some of the country's biggest grocery store chains may have increased prices more than needed, boosting their profits. A new report from the FTC says it appears prices at big chains rose faster than their costs. It also accused some chains of outright price gouging. More people are buying homes. The National Association of Realtors says sales of existing homes jumped 9.5% compared to January. The increases come as mortgage rates cool from their highs last fall. March Madness already living up to its name for college basketball fans. The first round of the NCAA tournament got underway yesterday, and after eight games, the NCAA said just less than 2.5% of the brackets remained perfect in their own bracket game. The biggest bracket busters were Kentucky, BYU, and South Carolina, all losing to lower seed teams. Will tonight be the night someone finally wins the Mega Millions jackpot? We'll have to wait and see. No one has won since the beginning of December, and now the grand prize is expected to be worth almost $1 billion. The estimated jackpot is $977 million, and the next drawing is tonight. Powerball is also increasing. That jackpot is now around $750 million, and that drawing is tomorrow. And that's today's 9 at 9. 
top stories this morning. It's been nearly three weeks and there's still no sign of a 21 year old New Braunfels native. Search efforts for the Texas A&M Corpus Christi student Caleb Harris have come up empty. Our John Paul Baraja spoke with Caleb's parents who say they are not giving up hope and are now offering an incentive for others to help bring him home. A lot of it's speculation, but um, he, he was either taken or he, you know, he, he was outside and saw something he shouldn't have seen. Uh, we just don't know. Lots of questions surround the disappearance of 21 year old Caleb Harris. Caleb's dad, Randy, says his son was reported missing March 4th in Corpus Christi after his college roommate said they couldn't find him. His wallet was left, his keys were left, his shoes were, he was barefooted, um, truck was locked. He'd taken the dog out for a walk. The dog made it back to the apartment, but he did not. Corpus Christi police say they have searched hundreds of acres surrounding the 21-year-old's apartment complex on the 1900 block of Ennis Jocelyn Drive. Checked surrounding apartments and interviewed his roommates, friends, and family, but have still had no luck solving his disappearance. As we approach three weeks, is there any lost hope that you will be reunited again? Not at all. Not at all. We're, we're confident. We're confident in the authorities and the amount of people and volunteers that we have that somebody's, somebody knows something, and that's what we're looking for. His parents described Caleb as a fun-loving person who had many talents, from fishing to football. With aspirations of getting an environmental science degree and plans of becoming a game warden. If there's something you could say to him right now, what would it be? Um, that we love him and that he um, needs to do everything he can do to fight to get out of the situation he's in and come home. And mom and dad are also trying to find ways of getting their son home. Now offering a $25,000 reward for information for a safe return. John Paul Barajas, KSAT 12 News. Corpus Christi police have been in contact with the FBI, U.S. Marshals, Texas Rangers, San Antonio, and New Braunfels Police Departments. But they ask if you know anything to contact them at 361-886-2840. We also have that information on our website at ksat.com. Right now it's 9, 10, 62 degrees. And we have to take a quick break, but here's a look at what's coming up next. Metro Health is distributing dozens of garden beds to help people in our community improve their health, the different benefits of gardening, and the impact this program is having coming up on GMSA at 9. Metro Health is helping people improve their health and sparking joy with a unique gardening project. Tiffany Huerta shares how garden beds are growing not only vegetables, but happiness. A squash and a tomato, and then you can plant whatever kinds of seeds you want. Garden beds were delivered to families in San Antonio Wednesday morning. We have a watering can that goes with the bed. Okay. We have some seeds. You can plant some bush beans or some basil. Okay. And uh, this is fertilizer. Butch Seward, a longtime resident of the east side of San Antonio, is excited for this new addition to his backyard. I enjoy seeing crop, if you will, come out of the ground myself to come and nurture it every day and, and to eventually pick and, and ingest it. This is the Million Gardens Initiative. Thank you so much. Congratulations. This project is led by Metro Health's Healthy Neighborhoods Program in collaboration with the nonprofit Big Green and AME Churches. Why is this project so special for the church? It's special because we care about people and we're at a point where we see all of these uh, diseases that impact people. Last year, 100 garden beds were distributed to families. It's nourishing to the body to eat vegetables, but it's also nourishing to the mind and the soul to be planting and gardening and bringing kids into it too, so they can learn about food and nutrition and do something together as a family. Metro Health invites anyone interested in a garden bed to join one of their monthly gardening classes and learn more about their programs. We know it's going to change people's lives forever. This program is building community and offering learning opportunities. It's educational, it's nutritional, uh, and gives you a greater appreciation for what it is you eat and how you get it. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News.
We're she seeing some shadows out there, which is Yay. a good sign. Hey, look at that sunshine right at our screen. Yeah, I kind of missed the sun. It's been a while. Mm -hmm. um, I think we deserve a little sun we on do. this Friday. Uh, it is going to be sunny by this afternoon. We still have a few morning clouds and fog out there, but it, it goes away pretty quickly. So it's uh, it's going to turn into a nice day and a nice weekend. Uh, so that's a bonus. So let's look at the satellite picture. Uh, you can see where the clouds are kind of situated at the moment and some of that fog. Uh, just south and east of San Antonio, kind of a strip here from Pleasanton over to Gonzales up to San Marcos, and then you got some breaks here in the whole country. But you'll see a lot of these clouds sort of break apart and go away here over the next couple of hours, and yes, it, it will be sunny today. Let me show you the time lapse, though, because it was foggy much earlier this morning. In fact, we had really bad visibility for a time, and then right about there, ceiling started to lift, and now the clouds are beginning to break up as we switch camera angles there. Uh, but now we're looking at partly to mostly cloudy skies. Uh, as we go outside for you, uh, we've got temperatures in the 60s, low 60s here in San Antonio, 63, 63 in New Braunfels, 57 Bernie, 53 in Kerrville. Yeah, we did see some storms last night too. A few reports of some hail coming through San Antonio. Thankfully, it wasn't damaging hail, uh, but that one lone storm came right through the city. Uh, and now uh, we're done with the rain for a couple of days before it returns on uh, on Monday. Uh, there's like the temperature 63 here in San Antonio, 63 New Braunfels, 62 Gonzales, 61 in Kennedy, 57 Bernie stage 58 comfort. So there are still some 50s on the map, but it warms up. Everyone's going to be near 80 this afternoon. We're going to 80 here in San Antonio, but I think there will be some spots, especially down to the south and west where the air will be a little bit drier today, where we could see temperatures pushing 90 uh, places like Eagle Pass and uh, Crystal City, uh, Carrizo Springs, places that could be in the upper 80s uh, this afternoon. Uh, and the dew point forecast does call for some slightly drier air uh, later today. We'll get dew points down into the low 50s by this afternoon versus the 60s this morning. So it'll just feel pretty nice out there, especially by the evening hours. We're in the backside of the storm system that brought us those storms yesterday. You can see the spin right there. So there's still rain in parts of Louisiana and Arkansas, and that will continue to push east. Uh, we'll get a couple days. Uh, in between systems and then we'll wait for our next one, which will start to uh, develop across the Rocky Mountains as we get into Sunday. It will produce snow there. It will bring an increase in cloud cover for us, but it's not until Monday that we have a window for storms. Right now it still looks like it's Monday morning, and so that timing doesn't bode well for strong storms or anything like that. But I think there is a window where we could see a couple strong storms as we usually are. We'll be on the tail end of things. Uh, that system pushes east. We'll get a break, another break, and then another chance of storms pulls in on Wednesday. So we still have this parade of, of energy. Uh, so we'll have some just chances here and there throughout the seven-day forecast to get a little bit more rain. Uh, here's how it looks. 80 today, 76 tomorrow, 74 mostly cloudy on Sunday, 30% chance of rain Monday, 74, 75 Tuesday, and then another small chance on Wednesday. Temperatures are actually really nice. I mean, we're talking mid 70s other than today all the way into next week. A nice break from what we had earlier this week. I'd say so. And uh, this weekend will be really nice. Uh, a little chilly tomorrow morning, low 50s, but not bad. Yeah, we can handle it. Yep. Thanks, Justin. 919, 62 degrees. Well, before you eat any fruits or veggies, you should wash them really well. Now, we all know that, but do you know which fruits and veggies need to be cleaned the most to get rid of pesticides? When we come back, a look at the Dirty Dozen and Clean 15 on this year's Shopper's Guide to Pesticides in Produce Report. This year's Shopper's Guide to Pesticides and Produce has been released, and approximately 95% of non-organic strawberries Leafy greens, grapes, peaches, and pears contained pesticides. They're dubbed the Dirty Dozen by the Environmental Working Group who produced the study. Nectarines, apples, bell, and hot peppers, along with cherries, berries, and green beans, rounded out the list for the most contaminated samples of produce. So those are the items that you need to wash really well before eating or cooking them. A majority of the testing was done by the United States Department of Agriculture and other government agencies Pesticides have been linked to preterm births with heart and with heart disease, cancer, and other disorders. So here's some good news though. Avocados, sweet corn, pineapples, onions, and papayas lead the clean 15 list with no detectable pesticide residues.
So yesterday we aired our latest Know My Neighborhood episode about the Northern Hills and Valencia neighborhoods on the northeast side. And one of the special residents that the team met was one woman that's somewhat of a superhero in the Valencia neighborhood. Yeah, it's true. She's lived in the neighborhood 46 years. She's gone from neighborhood veteran to a bit of a vigilante. Her arch enemy <laughs> is graffiti. Katrina Weber shows us how she fights it on an ongoing basis. <laughs> With a tune in her heart and a pep in her step, Diane Johnson is actually on the hunt for trouble. Oh, we're on a mission here, huh? Yeah, we are. <laughs> she walks the streets of her Valencia neighborhood for more than her health. While she may not look like a superhero, she's definitely a grime fighter. Is that graffiti? It's graffiti. Oh, let's go. In a single bound, the 67-year-old is ready to right other people's wrongs cleaning up most graffiti that catches her eye. I sure didn't like the way it downgrades the image of the neighborhood and it just looked terrible. She first decided to do something about it around 20 years ago. With special supplies and a lot of elbow grease, she's been wiping out this type of crime ever since. Yay, all right. She very active, like I said, has very been a blessing for the community. Johnson often partners with San Antonio police and the city to take down the taggings. You're like a team. She's, she's Batman Absolutely. and you're Robin. Oh, you're yes. Batman. She's like... <laughs> yeah, she's such a good partner. So good, in fact, people call her the graffiti lady. What do you think of that title, though, for you? <laughs> it's, they give me too much credit. No. <laughs> she may laugh, but this is no joke. Since 2022, SAPD has been called to catch more than 600 taggers, and a city team that tackles the bigger cleanup jobs has erased more than 21,000 scribblings in San Antonio in the last five months. How many times have you cleaned this box right here? Oh, probably two or three. While it may seem like a problem that never ends, Johnson is always happy to do her part to help. That was Katrina Weber reporting. I have to ask Katrina, like how she found her. Right. I like if she happened to see her walking around, I know that's one thing I wanted to ask her. We'll, we'll have see. to find out. Yeah. So that was just one of several stories our team did as part of this Know My Neighborhood episode. They also talked about some of the crime in that area, specifically car break-ins and some of the big draws to that neighborhood. So you can watch all of these stories again on KSET.com or the KSET YouTube page. Right now it's 926, 63 degrees, and there is more ahead on GMSA at 9. Including a warning to keep in mind the next time that you stay in a hotel room. The security flaw hackers have found that could leave your hotel room door wide open. Plus, if you're doing any wagering on March Madness, we'll share some tips to help you from losing all your money. out there with live cam yay there's the sun we've been waiting for you all week and there you are 63 degrees <laughs> it is warming up out there i like your enthusiasm stuff i was i'm feeling the same way though i love seeing the blue skies it is uh, looking nice out there it was not so nice last night did you hear that storm coming through it was loud uh we had, did have some hail and uh some sizable hail uh, you can see here it's almost the size of an egg and uh, they reported some damage there around woodland lake to some glass uh, so I said it lasted about three minutes. We didn't get a lot of reports of damage, but I would imagine that size you certainly could get a little bit. Uh, so we appreciate all the pictures. You guys did a great job of letting us know what you're seeing there on KSAT Connect. You can always send those pictures in, by the way, via our KSAT Weather app or the KSAT app. You can find KSAT Connect on there. And uh, that's the easiest way for us to show the pictures and show what you're seeing. Forecast for today, 73 noontime. We'll be uh, looking at a lot of sun today. Temperatures up around 80 for a high. Know that it will be a bit breezy with winds out of the north anywhere from 10 to 20. And your evening plans looking good. 74, 8 o'clock, 70 at 9 p.m. Uh, rain chances coming up. Monday is our next shot, and that will be followed on Wednesday. Not big chances, but we'll have some more chances for thunderstorms both of those days. We'll talk more about that in your extended forecast here in just a couple minutes, guys. Thank you, Justin. Parents, listen up. Fisher Price recalling Donald and Daisy Duck figurines from their Little People Mickey and Friends collection. According to the Consumer Product Safety Commission, the heads on the duck toys can pop off and be a choking hazard. Fisher Price says there have been three incidents of detachments, but no injuries reported. If you have this toy in your home, you're recommended to return the figurines to stores or online for a $10 refund. 
Another warning this time for travelers. Hackers have uncovered a security flaw that could open your hotel room door. But as ABC's Andrea Fuji explains, the good news is that the problem is getting fixed. This morning, hotel guests beware. With the right technology, researchers posing as hackers say they've uncovered a way to hack into key cards to open millions of doors at hotels around the world. Wired Magazine reports there's an urgent push now to fix the flaw. With just two taps, they can open these doors in seconds. Researchers found security vulnerabilities within the lock's encryption system. They say using a key card, they cracked the code and essentially made a master key. These security researchers have actually exposed this, and that's a good thing because now Dormacaba, the lock manufacturer, can start the process of trying to update all these locks around the world and, and fix this. They say the lock company has updated about one third of the lock so far. In a statement, Dormacaba saying our customers and partners all take security very seriously and we are confident all reasonable steps will be taken to address this matter. We also have to consider that they may have actually done it in the past, these more professional, profit motivated or you know, politically motivated hackers, and they may have even exploited these locks in secret to get into hotel rooms for profit or even for kind of intelligence purposes. How can hotel guests protect themselves? We're told the locks in question have a round card reader with a wavy line cutting through it. Apps can help you determine if it's been updated. If it hasn't been, experts say the deadbolt won't help since it's connected to the key card. So use your door's keychain instead. Researchers have not revealed their exact method of how they made a master key, careful as to not allow the information to get into the wrong hands. Andrea Fuji, ABC News, New York. The madness of March is underway after a big win for Texas and a bad loss for Texas Tech. And the question today is, how is your bracket looking? Ours are looking awesome, RJ, because we didn't do them. <laughs> exactly. But uh, RJ is back <laughs> to talk <laughs> all things NCAA yeah. and this Sunday's big high school basketball all-star showcase. Yeah, you saved yourself a lot of pain because yes. yes. this guy right here, not doing well. Yeah, not doing well. Justin, how are you doing after day one? You're okay. I was doing good until okay. Texas Tech lost. Oh, oh. And that's the real reason David's not here. I was about to say, <laughs> whoever wrote that intro talking about Texas winning and Texas Tech losing, somehow knew yeah. David wasn't going to be here. <laughs> David is not here. Yeah, yeah I'm sure he was, uh, he was not too happy. All right, uh, let's go over some of the scores from yesterday because, yes, the Longhorns have taken care of business in their first-round game, uh, beating the Colorado State Rams 56 to 44. Uh, Texas held Colorado State to 11 points in the first half. I'm not a math major, but uh, if you're scoring 11 points in the first half, that is not good. Uh, Dylan Dice, who scored 12 points, got five re rebounds for the Horns, who will now play Tennessee tomorrow night at 7 p.m. So the big storyline here, guys, is that Rick Barnes is Tennessee's head coach. He was a longtime head coach for Texas as well. Uh, there was, uh, I think they're they're back to being okay with each other. But remember when Barnes left, there was uh, it was not a great situation when he left UT. So this is going to be a lot of fun moving forward. And speaking of the Texas Tech Red Raiders, they did not get it done against the red hot NC State Wolfpack. They lose uh, their first round game, 80 to 67. Tech shot 22 percent from three point range. They were down by three points with 12 minutes left, and then uh, they allowed NC State on a big run here. So. So uh, the Red Raiders are out in year one under Grant McCaslin. Okay, of course, March Madness always means big upsets. Duquesne takes care of BYU in their first round matchup. Solid win for the Dukes. Uh, they hadn't actually been to the tournament in 47 years. So, yes, uh, good job there for all the, the Kane fans. Uh, they actually play Illinois next. Illinois looks really good yesterday. And even a bigger upset, Kentucky Falls to Mike Osterhage's Oakland Golden <laughs> Grizzlies, 80 to 76. This is the result that totally killed my bracket yesterday. Uh -huh. I had Kentucky going all the way to the national championship game. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, <laughs> Mike is still grinning too. Yes, yes he is. I mm -hmm. thought you were, you were going to make some changes to your bracket after Mike hyped up his team. Uh, I should have. I should have listened to him. Mm. I should have. I should have gone. But uh, we were saying didn't. that it's been. It's Mike's <laughs> 
<laughs> it's a bit of a magic moment for Mike right now with the Lions, Michigan, and now the Oakland Golden Grizzlies. Yeah. Shout out to them. All right, guys, a couple of games that we're going to be following today. Baylor taking on the Colgate Raiders. Justin's Colgate Raiders. <laughs> Speaking of Justin, uh, his alma mater here, the Aggies. Texas A&M taking on Nebraska. That's going to be a fun matchup there. And then we have Houston taking on Longwood there. Houston, the number one seed in their region. And let's not forget about the Horned Frogs. They're taking on the Utah State, the other Aggies in this tournament. Mm -hmm. uh, that game is going to be tonight at 9 o'clock. Okay, guys, so this will be a lot of fun, the college game. Speaking of March Madness, we're counting down to the first ever boys and girls high school basketball all-star game this Sunday. Check out these guys and girls right there. More than 100 of the top high school basketball players in the area will hit the courts at the Northside Sports Gym for four total games on Sunday. Two boys, two girls games. San Antonio Sports CEO Jenny Carnes says the excitement is building, especially with the attention the women's college games are getting. The reason I wanted to do basketball this year in our first year is so we can be inclusive of having both boys and girls games. So having 1A to 4A, including private schools, both boys and girls, and then our 5A, 6A larger schools, both boys and girls. So we've got four great games coming up on Sunday. So it's such a compelling storyline for women's sports right now. So to be able to have some of those top names here in San Antonio that we will be watching next year on ESPN during March Madness is pretty cool to be able to see him one last time on a on a home floor. All right, and some of those names, Ryan Forster, she's Brandeis, she's going to USC. Ariana Roberson's going to Duke. She played at Clark this year, so a lot of talent, especially on the women's side. Here's a quick look at the schedule. We have, of course, our games going on there. Uh, the, we're also going to have a skills challenge and a three-point contest. Uh, we did a three-point contest. It did not go well for me. Uh, <laughs> Stephanie's, <laughs> Stephanie's husband, Luis, and Justin did much better <laughs> than uh, I did. But we're going to air that either way. Uh, okay, four games. Uh, eight teams and again two different divisions all the way from 6A down to the private schools and you can see all the action right here guys starting case at 12 starting at noon and make sure to go to our website for more information. We appreciate your transparency RJ. Yes definitely. Yes. Oh yes. and Spurs yes here we go. <laughs> Spurs yes. are actually back tonight. Mm -hmm. It would be nice for us to get win number 16 here at the Frost Bank yes. Center starting a three game set. They take on the Grizzlies tonight. Suns tomorrow and then Suns on Monday. So it's just a lot of hoops guys. March yeah. is definitely the month for basketball. Memphis and then and back to back, back. Phoenix. Yeah. Got it. Yes. It'll be a lot of fun out there at the bank. Yes. Go Spurs yeah. go. Go, go. Go Spurs go. All those Thank nights. you, RJ. Have a good weekend, sir. <laughs> Thank you. 939, 63 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. Online sports betting is rapidly growing across the U.S. And March Madness is a big event to bet on. So when we come back, why it is becoming easier to bet and what you need to do to make sure you don't lose all your money, just maybe some of your money. So can you break a 20 or not? Oh, we're back. Uh, March Madness is underway, and the American Gaming Association predicts people will wager over $2 billion on the men's and women's tournaments over the next couple of weeks. That's right. So sports betting is a fast-growing trend across the U.S. So ABC's M1 shares ways you can bet on your favorite games while still maintaining your budget. The sports gambling industry has grown rapidly in the U.S. in recent years. We're now up to 38 states, uh, North Carolina being the most recent state that allows for that state level sports betting online as well as on your smartphone. Betting on sports is easier than ever, especially when you can place bets using the smartphone you carry with you all day long. You're truly just a few taps away or just a scan of the face away from being able to wager some money on a game and being able to bet not only on games, but also on specific actions within games. Are they going to make the free throw? Are they going to make the field goal? Are they going to advance to the round of 16 in March Madness? March Madness, college basketball's playoff tournament, makes this a popular month for sports betting. You know, the big thing about March Madness is that there are a lot of games in a really short period of time. If you'll be trying your luck, set aside a budget ahead of time. It's when we don't have a budget or we're not being honest with our budget that things start to go haywire and we begin to spend more than we actually have. Consider what money you can afford to spend on entertainment. Get really honest with yourself about what money you have and what money you don't have and earmark some money so that you can have some fun, right? And so if you want to create something like a specific account that is specifically your fun money, that's totally normal. And stick to your predetermined spending amount instead of trying to redeem yourself when you lose.
then if you end up losing every dollar, you know, on a really thrilling bet, it's guilt free. You knew that you had that money as fun money. It is what it is, but it's not going to affect other areas of your life. M. Win, ABC News, Washington. Steph, you got all that? Yeah. Okay. I'm on it. All right. <laughs> Just checking. I don't like to bet because um, I'm I'm already I already want certain teams to do well as it is, so I don't want to even be even more disappointed losing yeah. money. That's completely fair. Yeah. That's completely fair. And plus, that I mean, the odds are stacked against you, but that's yes. that's the fun of it, right? Did you pick A and M or Nebraska today? I picked A&M. You have, I mean, he has yeah, to. I know, I know he has to. <laughs> First round, you have to. You have Second to. round, third round, you can yeah. start thinking. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, no, I, I picked them to go pretty far. I picked Texas Tech to go far. So, you know. Mm, when some, it, lose some. <laughs> it is what it is. Yeah. It's the fun of it. Yeah. Uh, one thing we are so very excited about, guys, is a total solar eclipse. 17 days away. I can't believe it. We're almost, uh, almost two weeks away. Uh, you hopefully made some plans by now. And one thing, this is not necessarily a fact, it's just a reminder, and TechStad's been putting, out, putting this out there. When the eclipse happens and you happen to be driving, do not park on the side of the roadway uh, because there are going to be people looking up and there is the threat of collisions and all that sort of stuff. So make sure you're safe. Uh, if you are driving somewhere, make sure you're parked where you are not in the way of other cars because this is going to be one of those weird situations where people are distracted. I mean, people are distracted all the time on the roads, right? But this is going to be even worse. So anyway, uh, that's my uh, dad advice for the day. But 17 days away and we are going to have full coverage for you. I mean, we are going to be all over the area covering this eclipse and bringing you live coverage. So you can also tune in on your phone and on the app and we'll be there with you watching this event unfold. What's the weather going to be like? We don't know yet. As we get closer, we'll certainly let you know. We're hoping for good weather. In the meantime, today's forecast, 66 in Amarillo. A little cooler up there, but look at the highs across southwest Texas. 91 in Laredo, 91 Del Rio. We'll be around 80 here, so not as warm as those locations. Uh, and 91 down in the valley, too. But it is going to be hot across south Texas today, due in large part to the fact that we're seeing sun. Blue skies are out. We're on the back side of our storm system, getting some good sinking air, and it will make for a nice day. There's, there's what I'm talking about. 63 at the airport. Dew point is at 60. Visibility is now on its way up, and we have a northwesterly wind at about 9. Do know that that wind will pick up a little bit, and we'll get some breezy wind, especially during the afternoon. 76 at 1 o'clock. We're up around 80 by 5 o'clock with that north wind, anywhere from 10 to 20 miles per hour. And then this evening, 74 at 8 o'clock, 70 at 9 p.m., 68 at 10 p.m. Uh, this weekend, 76 on Saturday, 74 Sunday. The weekend looks pretty good. There will be more clouds on Sunday. It will turn a little more windy yet again. We'll start to see southerly winds in this case, and they will kick up. Uh, here's a look at the future cast. So that last system quickly moves east. By tomorrow afternoon, I know this looks like there's a lot of clouds over Texas, and there will be some, but it's mostly high clouds. So we're going to call it mostly sunny tomorrow. But those clouds do really thicken up on Sunday in advance of our storm system that gather some strength over the Rockies that moves towards Texas brings a chance for some storms well, looks like mainly Monday morning uh, but it will depend on the timing if this thing lags a little bit we could get some storms in the afternoon and that could mean maybe some stronger storms either way I think our odds are low end we're talking 30 percent and we're going to be on the tail end of things so that'll be uh, a day to watch and we'll certainly keep an eye on it we'll get a break on Tuesday and then another storm system, a quick mover, uh, arrives on Wednesday, and that'll give us another little window for some showers and storms. Nothing big, no huge chances of rain here, but we do have some opportunities. Uh, we showed you the weekend, 74 Monday, 30%, 75 Tuesday, and then on Wednesday we'll go 20%, 74. Temperatures really stay nice all the way into next week, and morning lows will be in the 50s, low 50s in some cases by uh, Tuesday and Wednesday morning. And yes, a lot of people have been asking about the weather for the eclipse. We won't know mm -hmm. uh, until we get, you know, seven days out or so. And then really it's probably going to take until a few days before where we can really nail down clouds because clouds are going to be really important. Yeah, it will be interesting to see how it works out. Fingers crossed, guys. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Thank you, Justin. Yep. Well, big thank you for all of your donations during yesterday's KSET Community Phone Bank for the Boys and Girls Club. We are happy to report that more than $4,300 was collected to help the organization. The Boys and Girls Club serves some of our city's most vulnerable youth and helping more than 3,000 kids in San Antonio every year. So once again, thank you for all the support.
Thank you. 949, 64 degrees. When we come back, Jake Gyllenhaal explains how he had to take care of himself while filming fight scenes for the remake of Roadhouse, which is streaming right now. And they're doing some cleaning out at the San Antonio Zoo today. We saw staffers in the hippo tank and they are still there. We'll be back. The juice is loose. <laughs> well, someone <laughs> must have said his name three times because he's back. The first teaser trailer is out for Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. And my Nona writer Jenna Ortega and Catherine O'Hara join Michael Heaton, the long-awaited sequel from Tim Burton. And Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice arrives in theaters on September 6th. Well, a remake of Roadhouse is now streaming on Amazon Prime Video. And as Rick Damagella talked with some of the stars of the film and gives us a look at the new film. Oh, they're not here to just watch. Oh, cool. Well, that's hardly fair. Why, it's not fair. <laughs> oh, I just slapped you. Are you all right? What? <clears throat> Jake Gyllenhaal plays a UFC fighter turned bouncer in Roadhouse. <laughs> the actor had to contend with filming with a very real UFC fighter as one of the film's villains. When you get told that you're going to be fighting, or at least fake fighting with Conor McGregor, you gotta uh, make sure that you are, you stay injury free. And a lot of that has to do with like keeping mobility and keeping flexibility and also just the right amount of strength and eating the right things and taking care of yourself. Cause we shot for three months and we we did fight scenes almost every day. I got a tip for you. Don't let no one get this close. The film takes place in the Florida Keys, but was filmed in the Dominican Republic in a purpose-built bar. I've always wanted a tropical theme bar. Uh, I'm not kidding. I'm very proud to have been able to own that bar in the film. You know, they, they built that bar, that built yeah, that, it's real. that thing from from the ground up. And now it still yeah. exists. Like and it survived, it survived, it survived uh, a hurricane mm -hmm. because yeah. we, we had in the middle of the shooting a hurricane. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, passing through. We brought a concealed knife in here, and that is a no-no. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. So Conor McGregor plays himself, or no? I, we'll find out. I guess, I don't know. <laughs> I'm joking. Uh, 80 degrees, mostly sunny, 76 Saturday. We'll have a chance of storms Monday and Wednesday. Okay, Sonic wants to help you celebrate next month's eclipse, even if you are not in the path of totality. That's right. The fast food restaurant is launching a limited edition drink called the Blackout Slush Float. It's black color celebrates darkness from the eclipse, but what does this celestial event taste like, Justin? Well, Sonic drew inspiration from the Big Top and Tropics, and it's described as cotton candy and dragon fruit. The beverage is topped with white soft serve and blue and purple galaxy themed mm. sprinkles, and everyone who buys gets a pair of fair, a, a pair, if I can say that, of eclipse glasses <laughs> to watch it safely. That's cool. The, the Blackout Slush Float will be available beginning on Monday and throughout May through May 5th and participate at participating Sonic locations. I was hoping it was going to be chocolate because it was a black. Good job, Justin. Yeah. Everybody. <laughs> Happy Friday. <laughs>